Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything, Medicare, Podcast Nation? Hey, this is Christian Brindle, wherever you are and however you might be listening to me today. Thank you so much for taking the time. And folks, this is episode 255 of the Everything Medicare Podcast. I'm your host, Christian Brindle, where every single week, me and my company, Christian Brindle Insurance Services, bring you a podcast episode where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. Folks, if you're not watching these videos of this podcast on YouTube, I encourage you to do so under the Christian Brindle Insurance Services YouTube channel. Um, But we also appreciate you listening on the audio version if you prefer that instead. Um, 254, 255, excuse me, folks. Episode 255 episodes of this podcast, and we're approaching the Medicare open enrollment period. The AEP is what they call it. The annual election period is what they call it. However, we need to talk about something um, before we start to dive into that material next week. So essentially, folks, there's been a, a proposed bill that has been passed that essentially would do two diff two things to Medicare, two particular things that interest me to Medicare. Number one, It would lower the age of Medicare down to the age of 60. Now, we did a podcast about this fairly recently, about four months ago. And I kind of shared my thoughts on that. I'll share a little bit of them on this episode as well. But it would also add dental, vision, and hearing coverage into Medicare, which in the past, Medicare has never covered these things, right? Medicare is really black and white medical coverage. If you wanted dental vision and hearing coverage, you had really two options. You could purchase what's known as a dental vision or hearing plan, or you could purchase a Medicare Advantage plan that comes with dental vision and hearing. Those are really your two options. Um, And I'm not going to kind of get into those plans today because we've done multiple, 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 multiple episodes about both of them. Um, Today I'm going to talk about my thoughts and my reactions to the proposed change of adding dental vision and hearing to Medicare, and also we'll briefly touch on lowering the age of 60. So I'm going to read you an article that I pulled up from CNBC by an author by the name of Sarah O'Brien to give her credit. It was published on August 25th, okay? So that's about a few days before the day I'm actually recording this episode to bring it to you, um, a few days before it's actually going live. So it's titled, Medicare would be expanded under a 3.5 trillion budget resolution approved by the House. Okay, so the key points are coverage for dental, vision, and hearing would be provided through original Medicare if Democrats' full 3.5 trillion budget plan comes to fruition. Reducing the age of eligibility for people on Medicare is also included in the approved framework. There is no guarantee that the proposal the proposals will make it through the full legislative process. Um, the article continues to go on. Older Americans would see their health coverage expanded as part of a $3.5 trillion budget plan approved by the, House of, by the House on Tuesday. Medicare, which is relied on by most Americans once they reach the eligibility age of 65, would provide coverage for dental, vision, and hearing under the budget resolution. In addition, the age of when people can sign up for Medicare would be lowered, most likely to age 60, as President Joe Biden said he supports. The proposals are part of of the Democrats' goal to strengthen the social safety net and invest in efforts to combat climate change, the House approval of the budget resolution resting on the 220 to 212 party line vote um, clears the way for lawmakers to draft legislation reflecting what's in the spending plan and potentially pass the massive package without Republican support through, the, through a process called budget reconciliation. Although there's no certainty that everything in the budget plan will, be, will make it through the full congressional process, 
Medicare advocates are hopeful that coverage of the extra benefits will come to fruition. The article continues, this would be a very big deal for Medicare pro for the Medicare program and Medicare beneficiaries, said David Lip Lips Lipschultz, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, Associate Director of Senior Policy Attorney for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. If Congress adds those benefits, it would fill some major gaps in coverage that the program has had since its inception, Lipschultz said. About 62.8 million individuals are enrolled in Medicare, the majority of whom are age 65 and older, and rely on it as their primary health insurance. The program was created through congressional legislation in 1965 under President Lyndon Johnson and largely reflect, reflected standards at the time, which didn't involve widespread coverage for dental vision and hearing, Lipschultz said. But as the healthcare system has evolved, Medicare has often been slow to catch up, he said. No argument there. Okay, and, and, and if you want to go read the art, rest of the article, you're welcome to do so. I'm not just going to sit here and read the whole thing, um, but I'm going to give you my thoughts and my reaction. This is my thoughts. The Medicare program financially is stretched thin. I've talked about this on this platform before. I've talked about this on this show before. Let's kind of dissect this a little bit. Let's have this conversation. The Medicare program is 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 dramatically stretched thin. Why? Well, let's rewind and dissect, right? Let's look at when this program was originally passed by Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson was the, the president that put, put into effect Medicare and Social Security um, back in the 1960s. At the time, there was a significant amount less people that were age 65 and older. And what was there available before Medicare? Practically nothing. Practically nothing. And more or less, insurance companies could discriminate, they could ask health questions, and, and a lot of insurance companies just didn't really provide any coverage to seniors at that point in time. I wrote about it in one of my books, actually, about Medicare. Um, if, you're, if you ever wanna go check one of those out on Amazon, they're actually pretty good, and if I don't say so myself. Um, thousands of people have read them. But essentially, they were really building the program for the population at that point in time. Now, I'm sure I don't need to really explain this too much for most of you to understand that the population back in the 1960s versus the population in 2021 was dramatically different, dramatically smaller, dramatically smaller. And because of this, they really had no way of kind of thinking what the world would look like 55 to 60 years older. I mean, later on, I should say. How many, I mean, they're not putting a program like Medicare into fruition thinking about 2021 or 2022, depending on when you actually listen to this. They're thinking about 1970, 1975. They're thinking about the next 10 years or so. They're thinking about the most recent years to come, the most close by time period. They're not thinking essentially half a century away, right? It would be like us putting a program into fruition today and thinking about and being able to accurately predict, I should say, what it will have looked like in 2075, right? And so when you really look at it from that perspective, Social Security is the same way, by the way. Social Security was never intended for people to fully live off of it in retirement. It was designed to be a cushion, originally. It was designed to be a cushion for people to fall back on. It was never designed for people to live paycheck to paycheck, month to month, on Social Security like so many people do today. Not to mention the dramatically lo lower amounts of population that we had at that point in time. So the programs were built for a much smaller population of people in those age brackets. Also, the average life of individuals is expanding due to innovation and process with medicines, which is good. I'm not saying that it's not good, but it was never that, that was never really put into the thought process when it came to actually putting Medicare into effect 50, year, 50 plus years ago, almost 60 years ago. And so what you find is the amount of people that are on the program is significantly more than what it was originally designed for. Henceforth, the reason why it's in the red. 
It's been in the red for a very long time. Shocker, right? This is public information. Anybody can look it up. Medicare is in the red. They spend more money than they actually bring in every year. They're essentially broke is Medicare. Now, I know with everything that happened last year with the stimulus checks that people, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get political on this episode either. I'm just giving you my opinion. Whether you're Democrat, Republican, I could care less. It's not what I'm getting at here. This isn't a political statement. This is a economic statement, which are really two different conversations. One is logical, one's emotional. I say things on this platform that Republicans don't like. I say things on this platform that Democrats don't like. I'm not picking on anybody, but there's something to be said about a, a program that was designed for 10% of the population, or I should say 90% less of a population of an age bracket than it is today. And the financial burden is already so large, right? And it's only going to continue to grow because life, expect life expectancy will continue to progress. It will continue to get older and older and older over time, over the years, over the decades. Now, like I was saying, I know everybody just kind of feels like, oh, well, we printed trillions of dollars in stimulus check money during COVID. We can just print more money. At some point, doesn't there have to be a line draw, drawn? I mean, where does it end? What happens when you print more money? Well, the value of the dollar goes down. We're seeing that right now with gas prices, are we not? Have you ever noticed it's about three times what it cost a couple years ago to fill up your gas tank in your car? That's not by accident. It's not all inflation. There's some other um, contributing aspects other than that, but it's very heavily based on inflation. You notice the cost of almost everything has gone up pretty significantly, pretty quickly. Why? Well, it's basic economics, folks. You print more of something, there's more of it available. What happens when there's more of something available? It becomes less valuable. If you have an iconic car, let's say, and let's say there's 20 ever made versus in an alternative universe, let's say we take the same iconic car and there's 1 million made, which universe is the car going to be more valuable? The one where there's less available. Based on how much availability there is of something will determine its market value. The more money we print, the less our money is worth. Henceforth, merchants need more money to sell you basic goods and services to make up for the depreciation of our dollar. It's basic economics. So printing money long term is not good for us. You know why everything is so expensive now compared to what it was nine months ago? It was so that you could get a thousand to two thousand, maybe a three thousand dollar stimulus check. I bet you you spend more on basic goods and services a year and in increased cost than that. You're probably paying more on gas, more on your light bill, more on this, more on that over the course of a year, then you probably got in stimulus money, if you got stimulus money. And I'm not picking on any political party, I'm just, I'm just telling you, in my opinion, how it is. So is this good for Medicare? Print, you know, another three and a half trillion. In my opinion, no. I don't think it's good long term for our economy. And I think it could contribute to really the Medicare system collapsing. Now, I, I don't know anything that anybody else doesn't know, right? I'm just, I'm just really telling you the facts as I see it. I'm not an economist. I'm an economy enthusiast. I'm a finances enthusiast. And I understand basic principles, right? At some point, right, like if, if, if it doesn't matter, we can just print whatever money we want. Why don't we just print a hundred trillion dollars and give everybody just unlimited money, right? Like, where does it end? 
where does it end? Um, it's, it's, it's almost like, if I can use a metaphor, a person that might have gained some weight over the years, right? Maybe they put on an extra 40 or 50 pounds. They know they need to eat better, they know they need to exercise better, but they're like, oh, you know, today's not a good day, I'll start tomorrow, I'll have that cheeseburger today, I'll have that milkshake today, and then I promise I'll start tomorrow. I'm done after today. And then the next day comes, and tomorrow never comes. They're like, oh, I'll have that cheeseburger again today, and that milkshake again today, it was so good yesterday, I'll start tomorrow. It's almost like, you know, just one last thing, just one last time. That's what this episode, an epidemic of printing money feels like to me. Just one more, just one more and we'll be good. Bad habits are just that, bad habits. Now, now does the government need to print money in some capacity? Yeah, the government has always printed money, right? Population grows, yeah, I mean, we always gotta print money, but at a reasonable level. So that way inflation doesn't skyrocket in a year. I know a lot of people would love to have dental and vision and hearing included with your Medicare plan. I understand, it's a big need for people on Medicare, it is. Um, and I, I, part of me feels like I would love to see our clients be able to benefit from it. I really would enjoy that. But, I mean, would it, how much would it really help you in the scheme of things? If, if, if it contributes to more inflation, more, more cost of devaluation of our dollar, more depreciation, all of your other bills going up, including your dental bills, by the way. You think your dental bills stay lower? Let's say they give you $1,000 of dental coverage. And let's say a crown is $1,000 for a crown. What if it goes up to three or $4,000 because of all this depreciation of the dollar? I mean, originally you could have just paid $1,000 out of pocket. But now, even if Medicare pays $1,000 towards your, your claim, you still have two or three grand left to pay. So ultimately, if you do the math and think it through critically, you might be in a situation where you're paying more for your crown than you would have been just originally paying out of pocket. I mean, I could be wrong. And I've when I have been wrong on this platform over the years, anybody that's listening has listened to us from the beginning, you know I'll come out and say I'm wrong. But I don't think I'm wrong about this. I like where you can pay 20, 30 bucks a month and adds and, and fill that hole. I think that's better than the cost of everything going up dramatically, quickly, over a short period of time. The devaluation of our dollar. Printing money, in my opinion, hurts everybody. Hurts future generations for sure. Hurts us in the short term. We've seen that right now with the cost of everything going up. So I guess the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what's the cost? Nothing in life is free, nothing. And I think we're seeing that. You know, people are like, oh, unemployment checks, where they're getting unemployment checks every week that was, would, was paying them more than their job was paying them that they got laid off on. Then they don't wanna go get a new job, they just leech off that system, right? SBA money for businesses, right? Billions, trillions of dollars of SBA money, stimulus checks, all that. Look what it's done. We're all paying more for everything now. And I kind of predicted this last year. You can go back and listen to the stimulus um, episodes that I did and kind of how, how it affected people when they're on Medicare. Um, this isn't a Republican conversation. This isn't a Democrat conversation. This is not a political conversation. This is, is this good for the, the, our country, you on Medicare, the world of, of Medicare, I should say, overall? And my, my answer would be no. Could be wrong. Um, I hope that I'm wrong if this does come to fruition, but I don't feel very good about it long-term. Anyway, folks, um, very controversial episode, I know. Um, I've never been shy about sharing my opinion on controversial topics. And um, I feel like it, it, it's one of those things where I'm forced to address it, right? It's one of those things where I have no choice but to talk about this because it has to do with Medicare. Um, 
I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. If you watch this on YouTube, please um, drop some comments. And you think I'm right? You think I'm wrong? I'm perfectly capable of having a an open discussion without having any nastiness or arguments or anything like that. Um, if you enjoy this episode, folks, if you're listening to us on a platform that allows you to do so, please um, subscribe to the show, like an Apple Podcast, a Stitcher, something like that, Spotify. Um, leave us a five-star review on Apple. It helps us so much reach more people like you who need to hear our message. We're the best Medicare podcast out there. We have been for years. The rest of them are not good. They bring you absolutely fluff information. We tell you everything you need to know. We pull the curtain back, and we can't reach more people without you. We need your help, the audience. We have the best fans um, in, in the world, and um, we appreciate everybody that listens on a weekly basis. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode again, and uh, hope you have a great week. We'll be back next Monday with another episode, and um, happy Medicare.